see what is happening here. The kind of money that has been spent for the removal of the deputy president, I think is unprecedented. This is money that would have been used to serve the people of Kenya. And this is exactly not what we promised the people of Kenya. This is not what we promised Maman Power. This is not what we promised the Boda Boda and the other people. Yeah, we actually feel very betrayed by the current administration because even Uhuru Kenyatta, who was seen as a very bad president, never pushed President William Ruto when he was his deputy to the level of removing him from office. He tolerated him because he knew he had been elected with him. They were together in the same ticket. How would it be that a person who has been elected by 6.7 million people has now been removed by about 53 people who have not, in my opinion, not done it out of their own will, not done it out of their own concerns, not done it out of the interrogation of the evidence that was here. They have done it out of coercion, out of intimidation, and other factors and many other things that have been done in, in that house because I'm a member there. It's been a long day. Finally, we've seen for the first time for the history of Kenya, currently former deputy president getting impeached. Was the fair? Was the process fair? Well, um, that would be a difficult question to answer because uh, I was a judge, so I would not say the process was fair or not fair. What I would say is that, in my opinion, this was a predetermined process. I would not say that uh, it is the vote that was done this afternoon or the vote that was taken this afternoon would not have been taken yesterday. And if it was, it was taken yesterday in the morning, the results would, would have been different. It is not out of what we have listened, because everybody, including those who have seen and prosecuted this, uh, this matter on the court of public opinion, including your own self, when you are following the proceedings, you could actually tell that the Honorable Mutuse did not have a case. The Honorable Mutuse did not adduce evidence. The threshold that would be required to remove from office a person who has been elected by more than 7 million Kenyans, of course that threshold would not have, been, uh, have not been met. Um, but anyway, this was a political process. This was a political process. So um, once you have been subjected to it, you abide to it. But I don't think this matter, once it is challenged in a court of law, can be able to stand the test of time. Because this was a matter that had very underwhelming evidence. There is nothing that uh, would have been called an impeachable offence, in my opinion. If you say that you're impeaching him because uh, he says that Kenya is a shareholding company, who is the appointing authority? That impeachment should have come from the president, not really for the deputy president, because the deputy president does not appoint ministers, does not appoint ambassadors, does not appoint uh, PSs. Where does he come in in terms of uh, the action of that uh, shareholding? So um, I'm sure he shall be able to get his justice in court. We actually feel, especially the people from the region called Mount Kenya, we actually feel very betrayed by the current administration because even Uhuru Kenyatta, who was seen as a very bad president, never pushed President William Ruto when he was his deputy to the level of removing him from office. He tolerated him because he knew he had been elected with him. They were together in the same ticket. How would it be that a person who has been elected by 6.7 million people has now been removed by about 53 people who have not, in my opinion, not done it out of their own will, not done it out of their own concerns, not done it out of the interrogation of the evidence that was here. They have done it out of coercion, out of intimidation, and other factors and many other things that have been done in, th in that house because I'm a member there. Are you suggesting now we'll help to see a former Deputy President Gadda Kashagwa at the court? Obviously, he have to go to the court so that he can be able to get uh, his justice and he must be able to challenge. I encourage him, as a person who voted against his removal, I would really encourage him because I looked and I tested the evidence and that is not a case that would stand on any court of law. I actually feel that um, the reason why this process was being rushed and I actually understand the reason why they were really pushing him to resign because they knew that they didn't have a case and they knew that this case cannot stand in the court of law. So we leave it to the judiciary, it is now off our hands. We have done our best, we have prosecuted the case and uh, here we are now. Talking about uh, Murima Mount Kenya, what is happening right now? How are the people feeling? What will be the way forward? Obviously, it's not a decision that they can make now because we are very, we, we are feeling uh, the emotions are very high. So, if you make a decision now of what will happen uh, after now, uh, we may make a decision that uh, is not very, very well informed. But we feel completely uh, betrayed. This is not what we voted for. This is not what we expected of President William Ruto. This is not what we expected as a payment out of the support that we give to this government. Lastly.
Mashimua. So tomorrow the MPs will have a special sitting. What do you expect them to to say or what is the special motion for? All about what out of the state machinizations that we've seen. Because if a gazette notice for the removal of the deputy president will be out, this is now midnight. It's already midnight. If a the gazette notice of the removal of the deputy president will be out by uh, midnight, you tell me, is it that government printer operates up to midnight? It has never happened. So out of the state machinization, who would expect anything? You can even you can even find that uh, they have appointed a deputy president, a new deputy president, so that they can be able to vet him and uh, rush through the process before we get justice in the courts of law. That would, because they actually know this is not in a court. So they would really want to rush it so that they can be able to um, have been done with their processes before we get our own justice. Do you feel uh, all this process matters to the life of a Kenyan living? Of a Kenyan living? Because right now people are, are calling for you know, proper structure, proper infrastructure, improving education system, health system. Because people are saying that uh, all this was just behind you know, someone. Yeah, why would uh, why would government focus all its energies instead of serving their citizens on fighting just one person? Why would the government, you know, the entire government, see what is happening here? The kind of money that has been spent for the removal of the deputy president, I think, is unprecedented. This is money that would have been used to serve the people of Kenya, and this is exactly not what we promised the people of Kenya. This is not what we promised Maman Poa. This is not what we promised the uh, Boda Boda and uh, the other people. Thank you very much. All right, just one question. Who's likely uh, to replace the former deputy president? I would not have a name because I don't think he will be replaced. Thank you so much.